My name is Devin Chasanoff. I'm a developer advocate covering the Google Ads API. And this is intro to the Google Ads query language. Let's talk about the query string that we would pass into the methods that we would use in order to uh, make a search or search stream request and break down the syntax of the Google Ads query language. So if we just kind of run through that left-hand column, you'll get a pretty good idea of what this syntax looks like. You select fields from a resource where certain condition filtering conditions apply. You can order your results, limit your results. And there's also this parameters clause. I'm not going to get into that today. Uh, you can check it out on the documentation uh, website, but it's, it's not that often used. Um, but just to kind of touch on this a little bit further, um, if you think about a report as a table, the select field are the columns in the table. Uh, these are the fields that you'll get back and only the fields that you request will be returned uh, from that's the resource that you're selecting from and you'll notice that both select and from are required none of the other clauses are required uh, you need to specify which columns you want to get information about or which columns you want returned and of course uh, which resource that you're actually getting uh, th those fields from um, filtering conditions ordering and limiting that's that's all optional um, so you might say that this looks a little bit like other query languages that you've used in the past uh, perhaps sql uh, while it is you know somewhat similar it, it's not sql so just be cautious of that because uh, many of the operators that you might be used to uh, don't apply here. For example, there's no select star operator in uh, Gackle. In addition, there are no uh, joins. Uh, however, we have a uh, this kind of built into the language itself with something called attributed resources. Uh, we'll touch on this on the next slide. Um, and there's no group by. We, we actually build this in using uh, something called segments. So let's, I think the easiest way to do this, uh, to really understand uh, Gackle and uh, how it works is really just dissect a, an interesting query. And uh, before we do, I just wanna kind of point out the color coding on the slide, just so it's not confusing. I don't want you thinking about the color coding. I want you thinking about how this, uh, this query language actually works. So just to kind of explain why things are color coded and so this makes more sense to you. Um, the resource in our from clause will be in blue, regardless of which clause it's in. You can see it's blue and select as well as where. All of our metrics are in green. The attributed resources, uh, which are those implicit joins I mentioned, uh, are in red. So both campaign as well as bidding strategy are in attributed resources on ad group. And then finally, segments are in orange. So let's start by talking about the from clause. So this is pretty self-explanatory, I hope, but this is basically the resource you are selecting from. Uh, this is the resource that uh, we are getting data from, and every resource has a set number of fields uh, that you can get, that you can retrieve uh, when that field is in the, the from clause. And that brings us to select. So let's talk about select. So with select, you can select a number of different types of fields. Again, these are the columns that will be in your reporting result. Now, if we look at this here, we can select the fields on the resource in our from clause. So for example, every ad group has an ID and name. You can put those directly into your select clause and you'll get those in your result. Um, similarly, you can request metrics. Now keep in mind that not all metrics are available to every single resource. Um, every resource has a defined set of metrics as well as segments that are available to select when that resource is in the from clause. So in this example, both metrics.impressions and metrics.clicks are available uh, to select when ad group is in the from clause. So when we include these here, we will get all of the uh, that metric data in our result set. Next, we have attributed resources, and this is what I've referred to as implicit join. So we don't have joins in Gackle, but uh, instead we have this attributed resources feature. So if you think about it, every ad group has 
a campaign because uh, every ad group is associated with a campaign. Um, and every ad group is associated with one campaign. Each campaign can have many ad groups, but uh, each ad group can only have one campaign. Uh, similarly, every ad group can only have one customer, one bidding strategy. And as a result, when you have those types of relationships, um, you get the ability to actually pull in data from those attributed resources directly into your select clause. So when you, uh, if, and you can look up which attributed resources are available on a given resource, uh, but for if you have a, an attributed resource, what you can do is uh, take any of the fields on those attributed resources, put them directly into your select clause, and those will be columns in your uh, reporting output. Now, finally, we can put segments into our select clause. And here we have segments.device as well as segments.week. And uh, this actually has two different uh, outcomes, placing segments into our select clause. Um, one, and you've probably figured this out by now, but uh, when we do this, we get columns for each of those uh, different segments uh, in our reporting result. But the other thing that happens when we put segments into our select clause is this is like an implicit group by. So if we put segments here, all of our results will be grouped by device as well as week. Now let's talk about filtering results. So we filter results with the where clause. And the first thing you might notice is that you can chain different filtering conditions together by using the keyword and. And you can place uh, different types of fields into your filtering conditions. So for example, we can filter on date. So we see where segments.date uh, during last 30 days. That during is a, it's a nice convenient keyword. Uh, there are a few different options when you use during, for example, last 30 days, last seven days, uh, I think yesterday and today are some options. Um, and then we can also uh, filter on the uh, fields that are available on the attribute in our from clause. So for example, uh, status, is a field on is an attribute on ad group so we can get the status of all ad groups uh, or we can get re, uh, filter our result set to only include ad groups that are either enabled or paused and this is an opportunity to bring up another uh, little syntax if we want to select multiple different options we can use that in keyword with parentheses and that'll uh, that's that'll select both of the options or everything inside of the parentheses and then finally, <clears throat> as I mentioned, uh, we have attributed resource fields. So we can actually put those directly into our uh, where condition as well and filter uh, where bidding strategy dot status equals enabled. So, uh, and this is another piece of syntax. You can just simply write equals and put the status there. So when we combine all of these together, the end keywords, uh, we're filtering results to just the last 30 days to add groups that are either enabled or paused, but only bidding strategies that are enabled. Next, we can order our result set. Uh, we can do so by segments, attribute fields, attributed resource fields, or metrics. Um, there are some details in terms of what you can put in there and when, but we're not gonna get into that detail, uh, that nitty gritty detail today. And then finally, uh, we have limit. You can put an integer there and limit the number of rows in your result set. And with that, you've kind of walked through the entire uh, grammar and syntax of a Gackle query string. <laughs>